Coming up, what is a vaccine and just how does it prevent you from getting sick? We'll explain. Plus, how is the coronavirus quarantine impacting your favorite wildlife and the world's ecosystem? You asked, we will answer. And grab some chalk and your imagination. We're going to take you on an adventure like no other. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Hello, I'm Lester Holt, and welcome to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm safe in my New York City apartment doing my job. I hope you all are safe at home and getting your schoolwork done. But I also hope you're finding some time to de-stress, to maybe explore a passion. For example, those bass guitars up on the wall, those aren't just for show. Sometimes during the day, I pick one up and I play for a little bit. And that's very important. Because this coronavirus thing and the sickness the virus causes, called COVID-19, can be stressful and confusing, which is why we're doing this program to help you understand it. So on each show, I'm going to start by sharing an important fact you should know. And so how about this one? Did you know over 80% of COVID-19 cases are not severe? Now, we know there are some scary things about this sickness, but it's really important to understand the big picture. Meanwhile, there's been a lot of talk this week about making a vaccine so you never have to get sick from coronavirus. But what does that mean, and how does a vaccine work? We asked our Kristen Dahlgren to give us a closer look. So what exactly is a vaccine? We asked some of you. A vaccine is, some, is a shot that you get at the doctor so you don't get sick. It's a shot to make you feel better. I don't really like shots, but it's a vaccine that gives you a shot that helps you. That helps your body get better. It is medicine that makes your immune system stronger to face viruses and bacteria. When a vaccine gets into your body, it stimulates antibodies that help your body fight against these illnesses. I think it does prevent you getting that sickness. Exactly. A vaccine is something that can help your body fight off an illness. They can do that by actually giving you a tiny bit of whatever germ you're looking to fight. And once it goes into the body, your body has these cells, they're called helper cells, and they they want to help you basically. And so the helper cells look at that little germ that's in there and they say basically, you know what, you're what we have to protect the body against. Think of it like building an army against that germ. The helper cells recognize it, and then they have other cells that are in the body that help fight up against the germ so that you don't get as sick. So your body kind of practices fighting that germ. Yes. Okay. Just like you would if you were going to go out and, you know, do soccer practice or football practice or baseball practice. The more you practice, the better off you are so that when you actually play the game, you do really well. So in essence, if you get that germ, your body is so ready for it, it will fight it and you will win. The germs in the vaccine are changed so they don't get you sick. It's one of the reasons it takes a while to create a vaccine and make sure it's safe. It could take a year or more before we have a vaccine for coronavirus. But when we do, Dr. Patel says it's important to get it not just for your sake. We don't want to get grandma or grandpa really sick and we don't want to have them end up in the hospital. So by you getting it, you're really protecting people around you. Yes, totally. Let me grab the soap. In the meantime, keep washing your hands and listening if doctors tell us to stay away from each other. I know it can be really hard to wait, but there are a lot of people that are working on this right now, right? There are so many people working on this. All the researchers and the doctors are trying the best that they can to help us come up with a a solution. A solution that could someday include an important vaccine. Boy, lots of great information there. Thanks for breaking it down, Kristen. So we asked your parents to submit your questions, and boy, we received a bunch already. Thanks so much, and please keep sending them in. All right, so let's bring in Dr. John Torres now. Doctor, our first question today is from New York City, where a ton of people, as you know, have gotten sick. Hi, my name is Naya. I'm 10 years old, and I'm from the Bronx, New York. My question is, with information going around, who can we listen to to get the correct information? Thank you. Bye. John? 
And, and Naya, you're correct. There's a lot of information out there. Not all of it is good. So if you want to find out something you read or you hear from your friends is correct, talk to an adult you trust, your parents, your grandparents, and your teachers to find out if it's true. If you go online, there's a couple sites you can go to that are accurate. Ours, NBCNews.com. We work really hard to make sure we put good information out there. There's also HealthyChildrens.org, which is a site that doctors who take care of children put out there. And kidshealth.org, which is a site from a children's hospital that also has great information. Such great information, Dr. John. There's, as you say, a lot of voices out there, so we want to find the facts about all this. Our next question comes to us from California. Hi, Lester. Hi, Dr. Torres. I'm Rosie, and I'm 10 years old. You're supposed to be washing your hands at least for 20 seconds during COVID-19, or sing a song. What song do you guys sing? <laughs> I'm not sure I've, I've gathered my courage, Dr. John, to sing yet, so why don't you take this one first? And you know, Lester, most people sing Happy Birthday twice to make that 20 seconds. I like the ABC song, A, B, C, D, and at the end, next time won't you sing with me? That's about 20, 21 seconds, which is the perfect time to make sure your hands are clean enough. That's a good one. I've been struggling to try to find one that works for me, but I, I have found some enjoyment singing Wagon Wheel. I don't know if you hear that song. It's, it's a rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me any way you feel. I got that wrong probably, but, but that's a fun song. But I think anything you can do to kind of, you know, make, make washing hands fun is important because we're all doing it like 90 times a day. Exactly. And you sing much better than I do. <laughs> all right, Dr. John, thank you very much. Well, Earth Day is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, and we received a few questions about the environment. Here's one from Michigan. Hi, my name is Anna Behrens. I live in Beverly Hills, Michigan. And my question is, what impact does COVID-19 have on the environment? Well, to help answer your question, Anna, we turn now to a familiar face, NBC's Al Roker. Hey, Al. Thanks a lot, Lester. And Anna, that's a great question. For example, we are seeing improvements in air quality. For example, Los Angeles, one of the dirtiest cities when it comes to air. Two weeks ago, the cleanest city on the planet. And when it comes to animals, well, because there have been fewer people on beaches, they're seeing a record number of turtle nesting sites along the beaches of Florida. But as more and more people come back out, we're going to start to see those changes maybe perhaps go away. Animals like coyote showing up in cities like Chicago and San Francisco. So as we come out of this pandemic and we start going back to school and going back to work and going to the movies, what things can we do to make sure that we continue to see improvements in our environment? That's going to be a tall order, but I think we're up to it with kids like you, Anna. Lester? All right, Al, thanks so much. And Anna, what a terrific question that was. Finally, one little girl in Georgia is finding ways to go on new adventures every day with her family's help. Charlotte's taking trips to the ocean, to the ski slopes, even way up in the sky, all without leaving her sidewalk. We joined her on her journey. Sure, we may be stuck indoors today, but that doesn't keep imagination away. We can dream and create with the power of our mind. Come along, dig deep, and see what you'll find. You could fly with big balloons up in the sky or pick oranges from trees way up, up high. Then save the day like all superheroes do and find time to say hi to Olaf too. Even walk the yellow brick road with a good old friend and tan on the beach at the sunny day's end. Or climb a rock wall until you reach the tippy tippy top and lick 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 your ice cream till the last drop. Maybe swing on a tall tree all afternoon and catch a big fish under the radiant moon. You can snowboard down the winding steep hill and jump off the diving board for a splash of a thrill. Might even skateboard to learn a brand new trick and fall asleep on a mattress that's super duper thick. Oh, the places you'll go when you let your mind be free. It's a world filled with love. You just wait and see. If you've learned something new, please let it be this. You can use your mind to dream 
anything you wish. As we think of our country today and forever, let's remember we're always stronger together. That looks like one awesome adventure, doesn't it? Hey, a big shout out to Charlotte's mom, Abby, who drew all that great chalk art and her family. Before we go, masks have become a part of our daily lives. I hope you're wearing your mask when you go outside. I do, this is the one I often wear, but sometimes I'll even don a bandana, and I've got lots of other colors. There are a lot of cool masks out there. We wanna see what you and your families are wearing. So parents, snap a photo and email it to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. That does it for us. We hope you found this informative. We hope we answered some of your questions as well and made you smile. We'll see you again next time. In the meantime, please take care of yourself and each other.